Hello friends, welcome to this week's landscape photography vlog. In this video, I share how I capture my long exposure fog photography, and I share some new time lapses and images from this incredible outing. I really hope you enjoy the episode. Check that out. The fog pouring over the hillside and making this really cool wave. And we just did a nice little hike up the hill. This is my friend Kyle right there. <laughs> yeah, welcome to another landscape photography vlog. In this video, well, we're gonna shoot a bit of fog photography, and I'm going to show you some of my favorite techniques for capturing long exposure fog shots, which are some of my favorite types of photography to create. Beautiful flows of fog. If I point the camera this way, you can see what I'm talking about by that fog that's rolling over the hill, dipping down into the valley, and then back up again and creating this just incredible wave. And if I point the camera down here, the fog kind of flows through the trees and creates different shapes and patterns. And you've got these thinner patches that are rolling through. And this type of scene looks just spectacular as a long exposure. But a lot of different options here to play with. So before we talk about shooting techniques, I feel like it's important to go over scouting because before you can actually shoot the fog, you need to know where the fog is gonna be. And this is going to change from location to location. For myself, I live on the coast of California, and the fog typically rolls in in the summer months from May through August. But there are chances of capturing fog year round, and the fog rolls in from the sea. I really like to use Google Earth to find elevated perspectives to get above the fog. And definitely in California, there's no shortage of elevated hills and mountains surrounding the coast. So for example, if I wanted to shoot in Big Sur, I'd go ahead and check to see if there's any roads or trails that go up the mountain. I would then check the elevation of that mountain to see if it's above a thousand feet or if it's even higher. And then I would mark it on my map so that when I'm on a trip, I can refer back to that spot if it ends up being foggy. You can check the weather every day using various apps, or you can even pop open some webcams and see some perspectives of different areas. Or if you don't wanna deal with any of that stuff, just use the F it and go method. Pack your bag, look outside. If it's foggy, just go. Most of my favorite outings are the ones that I don't plan. It is those spontaneous moments where I just kind of show up. And that's exactly what happened on this specific outing. Now for long exposure photography, the first thing that I always do with my lens is turn off autofocus right there and make sure that the image stabilization is off as well because that can affect the long exposure and give a little bit of blur to the shot, unwanted blur in the shot. I think this patch of fog flowing through the trees just looks so cool. All right, so usually when I compose my shots, I like to do it before I throw the filter on because I find it really hard to look through the viewfinder or uh, into the camera when there's a filter on there. And as far as what filters I use for long exposures, uh, I generally carry with me a 10-stop filter and then a 6-stop filter. The 10-stop filter I use uh, every once in a while. It's usually during the day when I want those smooth long exposures but really around evening time and around uh, sunrise, anything more than a six stop is kind of unnecessary. So I find the six works really well. Let's just take a shot real quick. And this isn't a perfect composition, but we'll do ISO 100. Let's do F8 and 1 60th of a second. If we look at the shot, you can see there's quite a bit of texture in the fog. And sometimes you want that texture. Sometimes long exposures actually ruin the texture that's in the fog. So it's something to consider. Before you decide you wanna do a long exposure of fog or really anything, um, make sure you understand 
what that is actually going to do to the scene because sometimes it will remove some of what makes the shot interesting. But I think in this case, a nice smooth long exposure is gonna give that surrealism, that ethereal look to the shot. I'm gonna grab my filters and I've got the case magnetic filters here, which you may have seen me use in other videos. And I like these filters because they're really lightweight. I mean, this thing is very thin and lightweight, but really any filter system is gonna work perfect. I'm thinking of trying a 15 second exposure, but we're pretty overexposed still. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this to F16. Now I can get the proper exposure here. And what I like to do is set my camera on a self timer, but if you have a, a timer release, that works well too. I'm just too lazy to bring a timer release with me. So, you know, doing a quick timer seems to work quite well for me. So certainly not a perfect composition here. I need to shift it a bit. I think I'm gonna shift over to my left so I can avoid some of these foreground trees, but you can just see what that does to the shot. I mean, it's so cool taking away some of uh, the texture and really simplifying the image. But, you know, usually when I'm out at a place like this, it's pretty easy to do both, uh, especially with these filters. I mean, I can just pop this right off like that, switch my settings, do a few short ones, pop the filter back on, do another long exposure. And then when I get back to Lightroom, I can look at both and decide what I really want. So this was taken in a similar spot to the first photograph that I showed you. This time I went a little bit closer up and I tried to remove all the distracting elements on the bottom of the frame and really give a nice simple approach to this one. So since this was a little bit more zoomed in, I was able to get this smooth fog at only a 10 second exposure. So I decided to pop the filter off for a moment and take a few more short exposures. I zoomed in to about 400 millimeters and here's what I shot. So this is an example of where I felt like the texture actually helped the composition quite a bit. So again, it's important to play around, experiment, and decide what's going to work best for each image. After shooting this composition, I switched to my film camera and I shot this. And there we go. For this image, I really liked how the colors came out in the film version and the addition of that nice film grain to give it a completely different look. Now you might be asking, well, how do you decide what exposure to do? Like, what shutter speed do you actually want for the shot? It really depends. Uh, you really have to play around with it. That's the best advice I can give. Play around, make sure you're going to a place early so that you can experiment and you don't feel rushed. Feeling rushed and trying a bunch of different stuff is, is usually not <laughs> as fun as, as playing around when you have extra time. For shots like this, I've found 15 to 30 seconds works really nicely to smooth out the fog. Uh, maybe a wide angle lens would require something a little longer, 30 seconds, to a minute, um, you usually smooth out the fog quite a bit and then anything after that is just super duper smooth. <laughs> um, so you'll have to, for those types of shots, set your camera to bulb mode and calculate out how long of an exposure to do and what settings to do. Uh, personally, if you want a good application for that, you can use photo pills and that'll help to simplify the math because I don't like doing math, so that app certainly helps, but most of the time a 30 second exposure, at least for me, is more than enough. A good general rule of thumb is the faster something is moving, probably the faster your shutter speed can be to still achieve a long exposure. <laughs> so if you're shooting really slow clouds and you want to show them cruising across the sky, you may need to do a five minute exposure to see that motion blur. But with fog, I mean, I see it moving right in front of me. I'm using this lens to really zoom in on the motion. I mean, I could do a two second exposure right now and see beautiful motion in the fog. So just use that as a general rule of thumb. The faster something is moving, the faster you can probably have your shutter speed be.
As that sun started to dip along the horizon, the sky filled up with vivid colors, and so I popped back on my filter to do a long exposure of Sutro Tower out in the distance. I was really lucky on this outing to not have any wind. I'm super happy about that because I hate shooting long exposures in the wind, especially when you're using a telephoto lens like a 100-400. Check your surroundings and see if there's a rock, a tree, uh, a little bank, just some way of shielding the camera from the wind. You can also get your tripod a little bit lower to the ground, give it a little bit more stability, and also use a tripod collar for the lens if you're using a big lens that sticks out pretty far. If all else fails, pull out your jacket and try and shield the camera from the wind that way. And maybe seeing if there's gaps in the wind to where you can take a quicker exposure right in between the gusts. Make sure to zoom into 100% and check your files as well. So it's after sunset. Pretty dark out there. We've got full moon that's just kind of glowing across the fog right now and this area down in here really filled out and you got this beautiful waterfall pouring through the trees and some of the lights out here so let me show you what this looks like just really a beautiful scene with these little house lights down there catching the fog and some of these little areas where you get the fog pouring through and then the trees peeking above and little lights down below and there's a ton of different options right now with the 100 to 400 lens now as far as doing long exposures right now it's quite easy all i did was take off the filter and it's dark enough to where you know i can shoot iso 100 and do like f8 f you know 5.6 and and uh do a nice 5, 10, or even 30 second exposure. Before taking more long exposure photography, I decided to switch over to time-lapse mode because I just couldn't help myself. It was so incredible to watch the motion of the fog. And here's how some of those time-lapses turned out. These moonlit fog shots were an absolute dream to capture. Perfect conditions, perfect density of fog. I loved the little tree line that was sticking out of the fog. And overall, I couldn't have asked for a better evening capturing these shots. So here's something a little bit different. Now this image was not captured at 30 seconds. This is actually a 2.5 second exposure. When I switched over to this specific fog wave, the 30 second exposure actually blurred it way too much and you couldn't really see the movement of the fog. So I shifted my shutter speed way down, pulled my ISO to 1600 and I captured this shot right here. And this one might be my favorite shot of the evening, a close-up isolating out the sky, focusing on that beautiful tree line with some of the warmer tones of the lights shining through. And I felt like that little orange light right in the center of the photograph just made for the perfect cherry on top for this composition. Really incredible right now, the fog really filled out here and, and created some beautiful patterns. And then the full moon up there just backlit all of the fog uh, some of those beautiful lighting I've seen on the fog before. Now I did shoot a few 35 millimeter film images during this moonlit evening as well. Definitely a lot tougher to expose these shots, but here they are. Now 
Now I'd love to hear from you which image from this video ended up being your favorite. Did you like some of the textured shots at the beginning of the video? Maybe the colorful minimalism shot? Some of the moonlit long exposures? Or maybe the film shots? Please let me know in the comments. Really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.